Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gamecock Central Radio. It's Emerson Phillips with Gamecock Central columnist Scott Davis. Gamecock fans still on cloud nine this week after South Carolina rolled through the Greenville-South Carolina Regional this past weekend. The Gamecock men's team is headed to the Sweet 16 Friday night game against Baylor in the round of 16 of the NCAA tournament. Scott, uh, what an incredible weekend. You know, when the Gamecocks beat Marquette Friday, it felt like a tremendous weight had been lifted off the Gamecock shoulders. The monkey was finally off the back 44 years since the last Gamecock win in the NCAA tournament. And I don't think anybody saw what was coming on Sunday against Duke. Absolutely not. It has been an incredible whirlwind, if you think about it. I mean, you and I have been chronicling this basketball team for a couple of months now. And there was exhilaration when you had those two big home games against Florida and Georgia and won both of those and you were starting to think maybe this season's going to be special. Then you went three and five down the stretch and topped it off with a one and done showing in the SEC tournament again. So it was kind of hard to know which South Carolina team was going to be showing up. <clears throat> but the last time you and I spoke, I, I mentioned, I get the feeling that they're going to be exhilarated by playing in Greenville. That crowd is going to be rocking. And I think that, uh, I thought that perhaps the chance to at least get rid of that 44-year drought might present itself. But once it did, um, to me, it was almost as though I, I was feeling like, hey, South Carolina's accomplished everything they needed to do in this tournament. Really proud of these guys. Proud of Frank Martin. Hope they have a nice showing against Duke. But, um, you know, it's been a nice run. Then they go in and play just the second half of everyone's life against Duke, 65 points. Duke's never surrendered that many points and a half under Coach K, much less in the NCAA tournament setting. That was a stunning, stunning half of basketball for South Carolina. Right. If the uh, win over Marquette had been the last win of the season and the Gamecocks had lost to Duke in the second round, I think the season still would have been qualified as an overwhelming success because the Gamecocks finally won a game in the NCAA tournament. But, Scott, the Duke game was absolutely surreal. 65 points in the second half, and the Gamecocks just whipped Duke in all phases of the game. They they Mm out-hustled them. They outplayed them. I thought they out-coached Duke. And Duke mm-hmm. was simply beaten by a better team. It was it was absolutely surreal. It was, and, and you're absolutely right. They were thoroughly, soundly beaten down in that second half, as I wrote in, in uh, this week's column after the Duke game. Um, at the end of the game, it was Duke players who appeared to be coming unraveled. They kept looking to the bench. They kept looking to the refs. There were just looks of agonized pain on their faces. And South Carolina was very calm, cool, collected. Um, you wondered how they might handle the pressure of having to win the game at the free throw line, and they had no problem whatsoever just knocking those down time and time again. They came up with steals. They came up with rebounds. Um, They just closed that game out in very efficient fashion. Never really allowed Duke to to make a run there. And so considering the caliber of talent that's on that Duke team, um, yeah, it's just a – that was a, a stunning display of basketball in South Carolina. Amazing. There's just no, no other way to say it. Yeah, 65 points in the second half for the Gamecocks. Most points ever scored by a Gamecock basketball team in a half of basketball. And like you said, Scott, the most points ever given up by a Coach K team ever. The most points ever given up in a single half of basketball. It was unbelievable. So, uh, Scott, you got to go to Greenville. That's your hometown. You were mm-hmm. in Greenville this weekend, but couldn't get tickets, man. It was sold yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, an extremely tough ticket. I was trying to see if I could turn in some favors or see if uh, something might present itself, but I just figured, you know what? It's a little over a two-hour drive back home. Let's just at least be within the city limits and just soak up the atmosphere. And so, I was able to do that. It was out and about in the city this weekend, and it, it just was extremely exciting to be there. Uh, it felt like a big-time event for Greenville. The fact that South Carolina was playing in it was incredible um, in a building where I've seen just about every uh, classic rock concert that has come through the Carolinas <laughs> over the last 15 years. So uh, it's just a, 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 an amazing scene. I'm never going to forget 
how special that was for that to have happened in Greenville. Nobody will forget the night that the Gamecocks gave Duke a good whooping in the second half in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Scott Davis, Gamecock Central columnist, is with us today on Gamecock Central Radio. His new column is on GamecockCentral.com. The headline, the title of the article is This Is Us, and this is who the Gamecocks are now, Scott. Stone-cold assassins, as you refer to them in your column with the way they put that game away against Duke on Sunday night. So uh, I've heard some Gamecock fans this week saying that this is one of the greatest moments in Gamecock sports history. You know, the the two baseball mm-hmm. national titles, Scott, I think still rank one and two for most Gamecock fans. For some of mm-hmm. us who are a little bit longer in the two, George Rogers winning the Heisman certainly ranks at the top of that list. But nobody will forget tonight mm-hmm. the Gamecocks whip Duke in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely not. I don't think it's a stretch at all to say it's the most important basketball, men's basketball moment for South Carolina. Obviously, they had some did some incredible things um, under Frank McGuire back in the late 60s and early 70s. But on this stage, considering the team that they were playing, the storied history of the team that they were playing, and where it happened and how long it had been since South Carolina had even been in the NCAA tournament, much less won a game or been to the Sweet 16, uh, I think it is the biggest moment for the men's basketball program in history. It just it has really injected some enthusiasm into a Gamecock fan base that, quite honestly, needed it. Obviously, football has been up and down the last couple of years. Baseball is still a solid program, but does seem to have slipped a little bit from the heights of the Ray Tanner era. And so we needed this thing, and uh, it really it has been exciting to see just how invested Gamecock fans have gotten into this group of guys. Yeah, especially after last year's disappointment of being left out of the tournament when the Gamecocks thought they had done enough to get in. You know, that was a uh, an experience that left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths all the way up until this past weekend, frankly. So the win over Marquette was outstanding. Uh, great for Carolina to win a game in the tournament, but then to beat a program, a marquee program like the Duke Blue Devils, and to beat them so thoroughly, so soundly in the second half, what an incredible weekend for Gamecock basketball fans. And, Scott, uh, not only are the men through to the uh, second weekend, the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament, the women are in the Sweet 16 as well. So everybody's talking mm-hmm. basketball in, in the state of South Carolina right now. I love it. I've always been a South Carolina basketball fan. I follow the program for decades let's be honest and uh you know without question it's the most excitement we've seen surrounding basketball in south carolina since i've been alive the women are just as we've talked about multiple times one of the most likable teams in the history of carolina sports and don staley perhaps the most likable coach in the history of carolina sports so they're they're extremely easy to root for and to wish success for and to have the men joining them um, on the national stage is just an awesome thing for South Carolina. And the exposure's been great. You sat there on Sunday night after that game and for a solid 10 minutes heard Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith on TNT talking about how formidable South Carolina is on defense and how it's going to be difficult for anybody to play them no matter who it is in the remainder of this tournament. And you, you know people around the country were seeing that. Emerson Phillips with Scott Davis here on Gamecock Central Radio. We invite you to download the Gamecock Central Radio phone app. We've got this free phone app that allows you to listen to our podcast for free on your cell phone. Anywhere you receive cell phone service, you can listen to our free podcast by downloading the free GCR phone app that's available on the App Store and on Google Play. Then you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and other popular services, or just visit radio.gamecockcentral.com. So, Scott, the, the Cinderella story continues. The fairy tale is not over. We go to Madison Square Garden Friday night to take on a Baylor team that started the season 20-1. and Baylor was ranked number one in the country at one point this year, and they played about 500 ball over the last month or so of the season. But clearly, this is a very good basketball team that uh, – can play with anybody in the country. And I heard Frank Martin talking about Baylor uh, and to the media this week, and he said that they're so big, they're so long, that when they get in that zone defense, they make the rim look very small. So the Gamecocks have got their work cut out for them against Baylor. But Madison Square Garden has been good to the Gamecocks over the years. And at this point, Scott, the Gamecocks are playing with house money. they got nothing to lose. That's absolutely right. And, you know, they, they have been winning games in the NCAA tournament by attacking the rim, driving to the rim, 
they'll need to try to continue to do that despite Baylor's length as, as coach Martin was speaking about, but, um, that's been a formula for success for them in this tournament. And I hope that they continue to look that way. But, you know, after games, after the second halves that they had against both Marquette and Duke, uh, I, it's you know I think this team can play with anybody at this point. It just depends on whether you get that performance from them or not. So I'm not discounting their their chances to hang around a little while longer. Seven twenty nine tip Friday at Madison Square Garden in New York City for South Carolina and Baylor, and that game will be followed by Florida and Wisconsin, and the two winners will meet on Sunday in the Elite Eight for the right to go to the Final Four. So the story continues for Gamecock men's basketball here. Scott, we appreciate your work. Great time to be a Gamecock. It absolutely is, and it's been fun uh, tracing the journey of this team with you on this podcast this year, and here we are talking about going to the Sweet 16. Couldn't have happened uh, at a better time. Gamecock Central columnist Scott Davis, our guest here on the GCR podcast. Scott brings us a fan's perspective each week. And we'll check in with Scott next week after the Gamecocks head to New York City to play in the Sweet 16. For Scott Davis, I'm Emerson Phillips. Thanks for joining us on Gamecock Central Radio.